Now listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions one to four. Hello. Sit down, please. Thank you. Now you are a new patient, aren't you? Y yes, that's right. Okay, so I'd better get some basic details down first. Right. We'll start with your name. Martin Hansen. Do you spell that S O N or S E N? H A N S E N. Okay, and you're a first year student. Yes, I am. Study in、uh, electronics, actually. Ah, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. And your address? Two eight o five Hesperian Avenue, Hayward. Two eight o five and Hesperian. Yes, that's H E S P E R I A N, Hayward, H A Y W A R D. And your phone number? Seven three four two four six five five. Seven three four two six four five five. No, you got the six and the four the wrong way round. It's two four six five five. Huh? Sorry. Right. And、um, when were you born? Ah,、uh, the fifteenth of June, nineteen eighty-six. Here in New Zealand? No, I was born in Sydney. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions five to ten. Good. So, what's your problem? Well, frankly, I wonder whether it is a problem. I get the blues, and it lasts for quite a while. I don't know how to. Yes, we all feel sad or get the blues now and again. Generally, our sadness lessens in time, and with the support of friends. However. If the depression leads to difficulty in thinking and greatly disrupts your daily routine, it can be evidence of a psychiatric problem. What do you feel exactly? I always feel sad and worthless. I find it hard to fall asleep and wake up early in the morning. How long has it lasted? Nearly half a month. Do you feel fatigue or loss of energy, or? You may have lost interest or pleasure in usual activities. Yes, sometimes. At first, I thought I could overcome it by myself, but I failed. And I am so glad that you came here. It seems that you are suffering mild depression from your symptoms. Depression? Yes, I feel depressed sometimes. But why would I? Depression may occur as a result of biochemical changes in the body. Alcohol, amphetamines, cocaine, and LSD can bring on depression. Those who have a family history of depression usually have a greater risk of depression. Sometimes the worrying changes in life can lead to depression. I see. I had a really bad breakup of a love relationship. It makes me feel hopeless. Do you think I need some treatment? Yes. Antidepressant medications are often used to treat depression if it is serious. But I don't suggest them at first because of the side effects. I suggest psychotherapy, which can give you support and help you regain control. So, do I need to come here every day? No, I will arrange counselling sessions for you, which will last twelve to twenty weeks. You come here once or twice each week. The psychotherapy is directed at helping you gain insight and understanding about events in your life, which may have contributed to your depression. With growing insight, you can often learn more effective ways of coping with your feelings and changing your behaviour. What can I do to take care of myself? Well, at first, you should do some physical exercises on a regular basis, at least three times a week. How is your food? Do you eat well?、Mm, yes, I think so. I eat at my homestay family. Good. Find a hobby or a positive recreational activity to participate in once or twice a week. I know it's difficult for you, though. When you feel it's hard to overcome the depression, come to the counselling session. Remember, ask for help if the load is too heavy to handle. Yes, I'll try. So, when will my counselling session begin? I'm going to arrange that for you.
Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Welcome to the food we eat, sponsored by Safeway. Increasingly, we know more about the effects of our eating habits and lifestyles on our health. While new information can change old ideas, the new stories can often be confusing. At Safeway, we try to help customers not only in the range and types of food offered, but also by providing up-to-date, reliable information in areas we know are of interest and which relate to the diet we eat. Today, we are going to talk about sugar. Recently, doctors have been advising us to eat less sugar. The health recommendation to use less sugar is for two reasons. Firstly, for the sake of our teeth, since the amount and frequency of sugar consumption links to decay. Secondly, as sugar is a good source of calories, it can easily be a problem if we tend to be overweight. The dental risk is because bacteria which occur naturally in our mouth feed on carbohydrates, sugar and starch, to form plaque and acid. Plaque is a sticky coating that prevents the bacteria being removed by saliva. The acid attacks the tooth itself. This takes time, however, so the trick is to avoid sticky foods like sweets, which stay around in crevices feeding the bacteria. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Regular brushing, preferably with a fluoride toothpaste, helps remove particles and resist acid. The worst thing you can do is nibble sweet things between meals. It puts your teeth under constant attack. A sweet tooth develops gradually. And you might be surprised at how you can steadily unlearn the taste, taking in fewer calories and saving your teeth. Here's some ways. A. Gradually cut down the sugar in tea and coffee till you can stop altogether or switch to sweetness. B. Choose snacks with a lower sugar content. Fresh fruit, raw vegetables, crackers, milk or low-flat natural yogurt. Remember, some fruits like raisins have lots of sugar. C. Look for reduced sugar alternatives. There are more and more around, from diet drinks to yogurts, even jams and sauces. D. Try gradually to cut back on the sugar you use in cooking, especially in baking. Now listen and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi, Linda. Can you spare a few minutes? Hello, Matthew. No problem. I just wanted to talk to you about temporary work placements. I've never really thought there was a good reason for doing one. I've got some savings, so I don't really need the money at the moment. But I've had an email from the university about a vacancy that looks quite interesting. You did a placement last year, didn't you? I did, yes. In my case, I wanted to find out if I was making the right career choice before I began applying for permanent jobs. I thought I wanted to work in car manufacturing, but I wasn't sure, so I applied to Toyota. What was the application process like? Lengthy. There were a lot of different parts to it. The dullest one was a psychometric test. You know, when you have to answer loads of questions about yourself. And you're trying to guess what's the best thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then there was an activity that we did in groups, which I found really fascinating. Engineers are renowned for being a bit unsociable, but I thought we made a great team. And we had an individual task, too. We had to sort through various business documents and prioritize them. It was just like what you have to do as a student, really, just with different content. What exactly were you doing on the placement? I was helping to design some diagnostic software 
to identify any waste in the car assembly process. Do you mean waste of materials? No, time. Anything that can speed the process up helps to cut costs. How did the work placement compare to being a student? Was it hard work? Yes, it was. I'd had full-time work before. I've done various unskilled jobs during university holidays, and some of those involve long hours. So I thought I'd find it easy. I was wrong, though. I think when you're on placement, you're always trying to prove yourself. So you push yourself hard to succeed? Yes. But I got a lot of support from my employers. They were always helpful. And then, at the end of the placement, I was given formal feedback. Do you mean on your engineering ability? Well, no. I didn't really need that because we had team meetings every other day. And so I had the chance to discuss technical issues and ask about anything that wasn't clear. The evaluation was about general workplace things, like organizational ability, initiative, that sort of thing. I get the impression you think you benefited from the placement. Well, the best thing is that they've offered me a job for next year. Depending on my exam results, of course, but still. A permanent one? Yes. But apart from that, I learned so much. The industrial environment was much more demanding than the academic one. So my general skills improved. Like time management. Meeting deadlines. And on the technical side, I learned new software packages, like MS Project. Well, I think you've convinced me that work placements are worthwhile, but... While you're here, can you give me advice on something else? Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. I'm about to make a start on the engineering materials module and I've got a book list here. Can you have a quick look and tell me what you would recommend? That's if you can remember. Let's see. I do remember some of them. Hmm. Yes, this one. The Science of Materials. I found the subject quite hard generally, but this book is very accessible, so it suited me. It doesn't cover everything, though. What about this one, then? Materials Engineering. Oh, yes. I do remember that. But it's a bit out of date now, isn't it? Unless it's a new edition. I don't think so. But what I liked about it were the pictures. They really help to understand the descriptions. It's useful just from that point of view. Let's see. What else? Oh, yes. That one there. Engineering Basics. I think out of all these, that's got the widest coverage. But I've looked at the contents page and it hardly mentions nanotechnology. Yes, you're right. The evolution of materials does, though. It's a recent publication, so it covers all the latest developments. It's a bit thin on the 1960s, though, and that decade was quite important. Well, it sounds as if they all complement each other in some ways. I don't suppose you can lend me... Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to Orientation Week. This is the Physics School session, and we'll welcome Professor Smith, the head of the school, to introduce you to the tutorial system. Welcome, Professor Smith. Thank you. You may have noticed life at university is totally different from that of school. For you, tutorials are an important part of the teaching program. Tutors are the primary contact between undergraduate students and the school. A tutor is the student's personal tutor as well as their academic tutor. Tutorials for physics undergraduates consist of six students who meet each week with their tutor for at least 50 minutes. For radiographer students, Tutorials will normally consist of a group of about 10 students who will meet fortnightly with their tutor for a period of at least 50 minutes. In the first semester, the tutorials are during weeks 1 to 11. For semester 2, they are during weeks 14 to 24. Everybody involved is expected to be present and on time. 
and the tutor will also be available in week 12 and 25 to discuss problems that arise during revision. But attendance by students is optional. Now I'm going to introduce to you the stages and activities of the tutorials. The induction period is from week 1 to 3. I know that a significant minority of you experience culture shock during your first few months at university, and the important function of this stage is to identify students who are having difficulty integrating into the academic program. In particular, tutors should check your attendance of lectures, tutorials, laboratory sessions, and this sort of things. Tutors also help you tackle work in a systematic and effective manner. Stage 2 begins from the fourth week. Some tutorials of this period are to be devoted to discussion or going over the student's lecture notes, but approximately 50% of tutorial time is to be devoted to coursework. You should finish the weekly homework assignments of two hours duration with at least 50% involving written work. At least eight homework assignments during the year should involve answering problems set on coursework. The written work collected by the tutor should be marked within a week of handing in, and generally the assignments should be graded. The third stage starts from week 8 till the 10th. During this period, math and four core physics programs are included. The majority of tutorial time should be devoted to work which support the lecture programs and laboratory work. At least 60% of homework assignments should involve written work. The assignment may involve writing an account of, or notes on, a specified range of topics. The written work should also be marked and graded. Short oral presentations by students should be included. They are possibly on general physics topics or essays. The last week's personal development planning is a structured and supported process. The primary objective for PDP is to help you to become more independent and confident, self-directed learners, and encourage a positive attitude to learning throughout life. It is undertaken by yourselves to reflect upon their own learning, performance and achievement, and to plan for their personal, educational and career development. Finally, if without evidence of good reason you miss more than two sessions during a semester, or if the tutor is not satisfied with your progress, the matter must be immediately referred to the program director who will normally issue formal warning, verbal and written. This will inform you that your place at university is under threat of withdrawal if no improvement is made.